Hello everybody and today I am going to show you the game again. I played against a candidate in a classical chess game. I played against Pragnananda in Fagendis International Autumn in 2022. Uh, Pragnananda qualified for con candidates getting top four in uh, with the World Cup because Magnus said most likely won't play in the candidates so then everybody in top in semi-finals will get the spot and Prague is in the semi-finals so let's go and let me show you the game it was played in round one so I didn't really know what to I, I didn't know my open until like one hour before the game so I really didn't know what to prepare for and he played one night of three I played knight f6. I was my, my goal for the game was just try to play uh, my best chess. G3, D5, bishop G2, C6. Castles, bishop f5, C4, E6. I was trying to be very solid. And then I played queen b3. I was, to be honest, I was waiting for something like d3, knight b2, you know. So queen b3, it is, I think, a main one of, yeah, it's a main move here. But I really wasn't sure what to play because I've never met this move before. I played queen b6. He played d3. I played 97, he played CD, I took first, uh, and then after takes, I took E takes D5. Computer says that it's a slight inaccuracy, I should have taken E takes D5 first. And then after Queen C2, which is book, computer suggests Bishop C5, but humans play Bishop E7, Knight C3, Bishop G6, and this is the position uh, which, is, which is quite, I think, popular. Uh, yeah, white is slightly better, so I decided to, to play, to go into the end game. Uh, takes takes because it didn't feel like I should be losing by force and I thought I, I should have quite cool good chances in the end game. He played bishop d2, played bishop e7 trying to develop. Though bishop e7 was a, an inaccuracy, I should have played bishop d4. The idea is that his knight is somewhat pinned to the uh, g2 pawn, e2 pawn, because now if knight d4, then I develop my bishop with his tempo and it's equal. And if he goes b4, then I can take, take, and then a6 it is, he would be slightly better, but yeah. Because in the game he got, I played bishop e7, he played b4, maybe even a little bit stronger move would be knight d4, and after bishop g4, h3, bishop e6 before, so yeah, he gained a lot, a lot of tempos, and he has a much, much better position. He played b4, I castled, now he played knight d4, I played bishop g6, uh, and then he played b5. Uh, yeah, that's a very strong move because now if I simply take b5, he takes b5 as well, and then a7 hangs, and also if I play a6, then he gets knight c7, and then uh, my opponent d5 hangs, and I'm much worse. So after b5, I played c5, he played knight b3, uh, still his pawn on b5 is quite good and my pawns on c5, d5 are pretty weak. I played a6, I just try to simplify as much as I can. Knight c3, a takes b, got double pawns, but that's okay. He took knight e5, I took, he took. I played bishop f6, attacking. My pawn hangs on b7, so I decided to make a counter attack on the pawn on b2. He played bishop c3, I took. And then I played, okay, maybe taking wasn't good. Stockfish suggests rook a4 immediately. And then something like uh, takes, takes, uh, bishop h5, king f2, rook e8. But yeah, he still would be better. I decided to get as less pieces on the board as possible. Rook a4. I felt like I'm much worse because as you can see, my pawns are very weak. And my bishop is very very stuck so he could have simply played f3 and after rook b8 play knight a5 and yeah he's much much better but he took on b7 then i found a really nice move c4 mm, that is the only move otherwise i'm completely lost the idea is if he takes rook a4 i get b takes a and then if he takes i take the knight and if he moves the knight, I take, the, if for example, he moves the knight, I take the pawn on d3. Bishop d3 is equal. So rook a4 wasn't an option for him. If you'd go d takes c, I'd go rook c4. Here, knight c5, yes, I would trade the knights off. And then and then I would have a very high chances because if I get the pawns, these pawns of the board, uh, then 4v3 is a complete draw. So that was my plan. He played bishop c6, which was the best move. I played knight e5, inviting him to take the pawn on b5, uh, then he, t he took, we traded the rooks as well. If you would go rook a1, of course, that's a blunder because fc takes b a winning knight. Funnily enough, though, Stockfish says that even here he's slightly better because my bishop is really, really bad. So after rook a, rook b3, 
it is uh, equal. He has a very good compensation. But okay, 91 is the move to keep the advantage. Takes, and now bishop gc was an inaccuracy. Uh, to keep the advantage, Stockfish suggests playing knight for him, playing knight b3. Rook b8, uh, my idea is to win the either the bishop or, or the knight. He'll play rook a1, takes, takes, and now he has a little bit more pieces and he has more chances, but position would be similar to, to the game. Uh, in the game he took on d3, I took, and now it was somewhat my dream position, very little pieces, he just has one strong pawn, but if I somehow manage to block it, for example, rook c8, knight b2, knight c4, I should have good chances. He played rook d1, I played knight b2, rook b1, knight a4, attacking the pawn, c4, rook c8, continuing to pressure it, knight c2, nice move, I cannot take the pawn because of rook b8, and yeah, uh, he, I play knight c3, rook b3, he cannot go rook c1 because of knight e2, and I win, and if he would go rook e1, I would get or g6 or f5 is a good play. He played rook b3, knight e4, keeping my pieces active, it is very important. Rook d3, now I play g6, now my idea is actually to take the pawn because back rank is in a threat. Uh, he played knight, knight e3, rook e8, I want to activate, activate my rook to make it more active to play like rook e2, rook e1 and maybe attack his weakness on f2 he played knight e1, and I played rook e1 mm, king g2 was played because otherwise he get like rook c my threat, for example if he plays h4 I get rook c1 and attacking this pawn on c4 and if he goes rook d4 I get knight c3, I'm completely winning so he has to sacrifice the pawn that's a draw that's why he played king g2 I played rook a2, keeping the pressure on f2 pawn, making the knight also somewhat uh, connected to the pawn so he can really move it away because otherwise the pawn is going to fall. This pawn on c4 cannot move as well because my knight is blocking it, and if rook e3, there is f5 with an easy draw. So you play g4, nice move, getting more space. I played rook c2, rook d4, making his rook in not too comfortable square, but that was the only uh, solution for him. f5 takes, takes, takes. King of c Otherwise, okay, if rook d5, I get rook c4, easy draw, so he tried king of c. And I'm very happy with the idea I found. I played knight d2, and I wasn't sure, I was really not sure what to play. Or I played knight d2, knight c4, and play this ending with rook uh, knight and pawn versus rook knight and two pawns. Or I was thinking rook c4, it is a draw, but yeah, he has good chances. I really was not sure on how, what to play. I decided to play knight d2, though. He played king of 4 I took knight c4, and after king of 5 I think I found a very, very, very nice move, knight b2. The idea is, for example, if you push the pawn, I simply take d1, take f2, and that's a draw. And if uh, knight b2, I take f2 with check, and then take b2 with another draw. And yeah, pretty much he played king of 6, nice move. Now if I take d1, he gets rook d8, knight in 1, so that's not good for me. After king of 6, I checked him rook c6. Okay, if king of 5 or king g5, I would go rook c2, I think. Uh, yeah, I would do something like that. He played king e7, keeping the some pressure because his king is super, super active. It's somewhat difficult to draw. I checked him, uh, putting his king as far as possible from my king. Then I played rook c2. Then he played rook g4 check, I played king h8, I decided to be safe, I mean any king move works, even king f7 works, maybe that would even be better because I get more active king, but I decided to be safe, king h8, uh, I didn't want to play king f7 because now he would get knight e3 and some play sure it's a draw, but I wanted to uh, go into this, transform into this rook and game because now he cannot move his knight because of rook f2, so he was forced pretty much to take knight b2, takes rook f4, I cut his skin off, this, this, mm. yeah, I think uh, rook a2, this, this, rook g4, king f6, uh, rook g3, and now we got this drawn endgame, rook, uh, rook and pawn versus rook and two pawns, it's a very easy draw, finally enough, even without this pawn, if I wouldn't have this pawn on h7, it still would be a draw, but I really didn't want to, it was like already, four or five hours of playing, uh, uh, so I wanted to keep it safe, I just tried to block his skin off, this, this, um, here I was just playing, switching between strategies or super active or defensive, this is, is just waiting, so he has to do something, he plays h4, I played h5 just stopping his h pawn completely, he played king f4, check, rook b6, so my idea, if he goes somewhere with his king, I will be able to get rook a4, and then this h4 pawn can be a weakness. I was keeping my rook on the 6th rank, 
rook e4, rook b6, rook e4, rook f6, this should be 6. Rook c6, just keeping everything simple. Uh, check, check, rook a5. Now my idea is just yeah, to check him. Uh, rook a4, rook a3, maybe rook a2, rook a3 at some point. He played king e3, I checked him. Rook a6, back to my defense on the 6th rank. Rook a4, rook a6, once again back to the defense. Rook g5, king h6, f4. Uh, and now after f4, I got a pretty much forced draw because I had got rook c3. The idea is if king g2, he played that in the game, I get rook c2. If he gets king g1, I get, uh, yeah, I get anything. Rook c4, rook f5, king g6, rook f8, king g7, repetition. And if he goes somewhere else, I take the pawn. And if rook g5, king f6, we say draw. So he played king h3, I checked him. He played rook g3. I played rook to c4. The idea is if you would go rook f3, I would go king g6, and then king f5. For example, king g3, king f5. And if rook goes here, I get rook c5 and an easy draw just now keeping my rook on the fifth rank um so king g6 if you go f5 then king f6 a draw and yeah uh so instead of rook f3 he played f5 then played rook f4 attacking the pawn with my rook he played rook g5 if rook g6 i would go king h7 and he would, we would transpose to the game after rook g5 king h6 so rook g5 uh i checked him he played king g2 uh, rook f4, attack and the pawn, this rook f1. The idea if he moves the rook, I get the pawn, right? And if he moves the king to h3, I check him. Once again, he cannot move the rook because the pawn falls. And then king h2, I go rook f4, he has to move the king, rook f1, and some, some, uh, I trapped his king, and here he offered a draw, and I of course accepted it, and after 100 moves, I managed to draw Prague. I was very, very happy with the game. I think it was a nice defend, and that is how, yeah, I managed to draw Prague, guys. Sure, yeah, the opening was, I, I wasn't, re I really wasn't sure on how to play it, and I somehow messed, I, I, not somehow, but I somewhat messed it up, uh, but then fortunately he didn't transform into a winning endgame with F3. He was, I think, maybe a little bit greedy, and then I managed to get to this Rook and Knight, Rook Knight and three points endgame versus Rook Knight and four points. Then I put pressure. And then we traded the knights, and then we transported to an endgame rook and pawn versus rook and two pawns. And then, after a long tire in defense, I managed to hold it, and that was a draw. So, yeah, that's it. That's how I drew Prague, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what games you want me to cover in the next video. I really hope you like the video, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody, and bye-bye.